If you're thinking about buying the ShotScope V3 GPS watch, then you're gonna wanna make sure you watch all of this video because I'm gonna give you my full honest review. Now I've used this watch for several rounds and there's a lot of things that I really, really like with this watch for the price that it is. However, I've also seen a lot of reviews that have actually failed to mention what I think are quite key bits of information that you're gonna wanna know before you decide to commit and buy this watch. So I really hope you find this video helpful. Smash that like button if you do, and let's jump straight in. Now for 180 pounds, you're not only getting the GPS watch, but you're also getting 16 club tags that screw into the end of your clubs and give you specific yardages and data for each of the clubs in your bag. Now, I don't think there's any GPS watches available at the moment with those club tags for anywhere near that kind of price. So out the box, the V3 looks like it's really, really good value for money. Looking at the watch specifically, and I've got to say, first of all, I was pretty impressed with the form factor. You can see here that I've got it next to my iWatch Series 2, and it does fit quite nice and flat. I've got a very small wrist, and I don't really have any problems with this watch. I think it looks good sitting on my wrist. It hasn't got a touch screen. Instead, what you've got are these four buttons on the side. And to be honest, the actual use of the watch is pretty straightforward. The screen feels pretty basic when you see it. It's this blue background and it's got these white buttons on it and white information. And you have a couple of seconds before the screen then kind of dips and fades back down to save battery. But I didn't have any problems reading this out on the golf course, even on the sunniest of days. The design itself isn't particularly stylish. I'd say it's more function over form. As soon as I took the watch out of the box, one of the first things that kind of disappointed me a little bit was the strap. Feels like they've saved quite a bit of money here. It is very, very soft and quite kind of sticky and rubbery, but instantly that means just fluff got attracted to it straight away. And also, again, you can probably hear it here. That buckle system, it's a plastic buckle. It's nice and easy to use, but it's not necessarily the nicest feeling buckle. It feels pretty cheap and plasticky. The watch is available in four different colors. So you've got a few choices there for personalization. Now, apart from the watch and the 16 tags, the other thing that you get in the box is the charging cable. It's not particularly long. So it really depends upon where your charging points are and where it's gonna position itself. The charger just kind of easily clips on with this crocodile clip. And you can see here that you've got the four elements on the side of the watch there. No big deal, just clips on nice and easy, push it on and it starts charging. In terms of charging, I've got to say that that was really quite impressive. I did a test and it went from zero to 100% in around about an hour and a half. And in terms of the battery life, actually that's really impressive as well for me. So I've used this for a couple of rounds and it didn't drain the whole battery. So you can easily, easily get two rounds out of this. The V3 comes with 16 club tags as well. So you've got enough there for your normal bag and you've got some spare ones as well. Using the watch out on the course, and I've got to say, I found it pretty simple and straightforward to use. You can see here on the main display of the watch, it lets you know what hole you're on at the bottom as well as what par it is. And then the main numbers in the middle of the screen show you the distance to the center of the green as well as to the front and the back. A nice little touch as well is that it always shows the time at the top of the watch as well. On other watches that I've tried, the time actually disappears and you have to go in the menu to try and find it or swipe across. To access the hazards on the course, you press the top right button. You can see the little exclamation point on the screen. Then it tells you the yardages to the front of and to carry various hazards like bunkers and water. So again, that information is pretty easy to use. There's no course map or green layout or anything like that on this screen. But as I said, for 180 pounds, that's one of the sacrifices you make for buying a cheaper GPS watch. Also, while you're out on the course, you can press the top left button and that will give you a few other options. One of those options is that it shows you the distance you hit your previous shot. So that's really kind of handy information that sometimes you might want to know nice and easy when you're out on the course. And you can also do things like set penalties and that kind of thing in case you lost the ball out of bounds or you had to take a drop, which I do quite a lot. And that's an area that I find a little bit tricky with this watch because that's not totally self-explanatory the way that you use that out on the course. It takes a little bit of getting used to and certainly dealing with things like drop shots or out of bounds or lost balls when you're then editing your app afterwards is something that I found quite frustrating but we'll come on to that in more detail in a little bit. If you are thinking about buying the watch, then I have included my affiliate links down in the description below. And if you are finding this video helpful, don't forget to smash that like button. Now, once you get to the green, the watch automatically flips over to pin collect mode. So the way it works is that you hit your putts, maybe you hit a one putt, maybe you hit two, or if you're like me, you're probably gonna hit a three putt, but the sensor in the top of your putter, hopefully is gonna pick up the putts and roughly where you hit them from. And then when you get to the flag, you press and confirm whether you hit one, two, three, or more putts. 
And the idea is, is that when you press that, when you're at the pin, it puts a little marker down and it saves where the flag was located for that hole. Now I've got a couple of points on this. The first thing is you've really got to remember to use that pin collect mode because it's just not something you naturally do. Certainly the first few times you use the watch and the amount of times I've forgotten to press that pin collect button, got to the next tee box, looked at my watch and gone, oh, I didn't press the button. So that's something you really need to remember because it saves you a fair bit of time at the end of the round when you're adjusting your scores. The second thing is it's still not entirely accurate anyway. It's probably only accurate to a couple of feet, which is understandable because it's a GPS watch. So it still means that you're probably gonna have to edit it anyway at the end of your round. So you still need to kind of remember where the flag was roughly when you're editing your round afterwards. Something else that I think you really ought to know is that at the moment, the ShotScope V3 can only do stroke play. It can't handle Stapleford. Now for a lot of people, that's fine, that's not a problem at all. For me and a lot of other golfers, I really only play Stapleford with my society on a weekend. So the fact that it can't handle that is a little bit disappointing, especially when there are free golf GPS apps on your watch that can. Now ShotScope say that they are working on it and hopefully there'll be an update to bring that to the watch. The reason why I find that so annoying is because that when I play Stapleford, if I'm out of a hole, generally I'll pick up to help speed up play. I won't finish that hole. However, the shot scope will then track on the stats that actually my last shot went in the hole. So it completely screws up your stats. So that means that you then have to go back into the app afterwards and make up figures. That's not ideal either and just kind of takes up your time as well as not being truly accurate representations of those shots because you never hit them, you're making them up. One other thing that I did wanna talk about when using this watch out on the course, and that's the actual tags themselves. So the way that they're supposed to work is that when you hit your shot, the watch knows what club you use, and then it will record where you play your next shot from, and so it'll work out how far that shot went and your accuracy. However, I found it's not the most consistent unit at picking up when you hit your shot. Now on the ShotScope website, it does say that you need to take a couple of full practice swings. And then once you've done that, you'll see on the watch a little notification to show what club it is that you're using. Now for me, I don't take that many practice swings. I do a bit more of a waggle really, I do a bit more of a swing thought, and that's about it. So on several occasions, it just didn't pick up that I was using the club. That means that when you get home and then try to edit the round, it actually has missed out a shot or two completely. And so it says that your round was a lot lower because it thinks that you took less shots. I would absolutely love it if I could bomb my driver 350 yards, but that's simply not the case and it's gonna take me two shots to get that far. A couple of other small points that I noticed using this watch out on the golf course. And the first one is that you can't really check your scores while you're out on the course. It just kind of does it automatically with the tag tracking and the way that you enter the putts. So you're always gonna need to keep your scorecard anyway separately. One other quick point is that although it's got Bluetooth to connect to your phone, that's to use the app after the round. So you can't get notifications and text messages from your phone onto the watch. So that's how I got on with the watch on the course. Now I think more importantly is I'm gonna tell you about my experience of using the watch after the round. So using the tracking features. Now, the way that this works is that you sync the watch to your phone and specifically to the ShotScope app on your phone and then it uploads all of the data. That's the first time that you can see your scorecards and most of the times that I use the watch, that's when I noticed that it missed quite a lot of shots and so I've got to go back in and edit some of those holes to actually put in the shots that it missed. Now, as a bit of a humble brag, I'd say I'm quite technologically advanced. I'm quite happy using computers and I love a macro on an Excel spreadsheet and I even hold the most random world record on a specific video game. That's right, I've got a world record. Anyway, the point I'm trying to make is that I actually find the app quite fiddly, especially if you've lost the ball or you've had to play a drop shot and then you need to add it back in. It's taken me anywhere between 15 to 30 minutes at the end of each of my rounds to try and get the stats and the shots all in the app properly. So if you're hoping that the watch is just gonna perfectly track every single one of your shots and you don't need to worry about it whatsoever, I don't think I can quite say that. I don't think that's the case with this watch. You do need to go back and certainly you need to double check, let alone add shots in or change them and correct them. Take a look at this par three at Mardite Valley Golf Course. It says that I got a hole in one. Of course I did it. I took a six. So the shot scope recorded my tee shot, but then it missed three bunker shots as well as two putts. 
and it took me quite a while to then go back in and add them into the app. Now you need to go back in and make these amendments because it affects the stats that you get at the end. And the whole point of buying the ShotScope V3 is the stats. And the amount of information it provides is really, really helpful. And I think is shown in a really, really clear way. However, if it's not accurate, what's the point? If you do take the time to correct the shots and make sure that they accurately reflect what you did on the golf course, then the stats that you get, I think are absolutely fantastic. And I genuinely believe can help make you a better player because they'll easily identify where you need to improve. Not only will you be able to understand your average yardages as well as your misses left, right, short or long with each of the clubs, but actually you'll also be able to compare yourself using shots gained not only against the Tour Pro, which to be honest, unless you're trying to be a Tour Pro, doesn't really help anyone, but you can actually compare yourself with shots gained against other handicap levels. So for me, I'm trying to get down to a single digit handicap and I can compare my shots gained data against the average 10 handicap. So actually I can tell that my driving isn't actually too bad and I'm about where I need to be, but my approach shots are really letting me down compared to the average 10 handicapper. And so that's an area that I need to focus on. That kind of data is invaluable really, if you're looking to improve as a golfer. In terms of the distances recorded with each club, there's a few different pieces of information that are displayed. First of all, there's the total average, which takes into account every single shot you ever hit, so long as it wasn't marked as an approach shot. So for example, if you hit a five iron as a little bump and run under some trees, you can mark it as a positional shot and it won't count against your overall stats. However, the watch then actually does something else, which is called your playing averages, and that actually takes out the extraordinarily long shots as well as the extraordinary short shots as well, and it gives you more like your realistic playing averages. Now again, I think that's really handy because as an average golfer, I can easily chunk a seven iron 120 yards when really generally I'm carrying anywhere between about 150 to 165. Using the app, you can also sign up to various leaderboards and competitions if you want to, but personally, I haven't tried any of that out for myself yet. And the other thing that I do really like about the app is that it's really easy to share examples of your holes. So if you've done a really, really good par five and you've got a birdie on it or something like that, then there's a little button at the top and you can share a neat little picture which shows your distances for each shot, shows you your score, shows you the club, and it's all wrapped up and nice and easy to use. So for 180 pounds, you are getting an accurate GPS watch, which is quite easy to use out on the golf course and potentially could provide you with a lot of data to really help you improve your game. However, it's not necessarily as straightforward and easy to use after your round is finished as you might hope. So you've got to be aware going into it that you're probably going to need to kind of tweak the data and make sure that you remember the majority of your shots to ensure that the data you've got is as accurate as possible. That might not be something people are aware of or are actually prepared to do. Equally, the other main frustration for me is the fact that it doesn't do Stapleford. It only does stroke play. I've also recently bought the brand new Garmin S42, which comes in at around 250 pounds, but doesn't have all of the tags that you get with the shot scope. So if you wanna see what that extra money gets you, or perhaps doesn't get you, then make sure you subscribe to my channel and press that notification button because I'll be getting the review out for that watch very, very soon. But for now, I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure you smash that like button if you do, and I'll catch you next time.